Hey guys, it is me Stace. Today we're going to be using the silhouette machine to make this adorable 3D tie box. Isn't that cute? The lid comes off and you can put in there right, maybe a full-size candy bar, a few ind individual wrapped candies, maybe some dollars, some change, some trinkets. Really fun. Great for dad for Father's Day, which is coming up. Great for a birthday gift, even for Christmas. I, this is a Lori Whitlock file. I will have the SVG link below. It is $1.99, so if you want to use your Cricut or the Brothers Scan and Cut, you can certainly cut it out. All right, so to get started, you will cut out your design. So for the box itself, it does take one piece of 12 by 12 cardstock for the box, then a piece, I don't know, maybe a six by 10 for the pattern paper. So we're first going to assemble the box. Now you'll see this one has the notches in it for the sides. This is the top of the box. So it's gonna work on the bottom. Just make sure you press on all those square marks. I think I've got them all there, and I want to do the sides. Okay, I think we got them all. All right, now we're going to start gluing all of our flaps. So I'm first going to work at the bottom. Right here, I'm going to use my art glitter glue. I get this from maymaymadeit.com. We're going to put glue on the flap here and you want to go all the way to the fold and just bring it up to match the piece next to it. Just give the glue a second to grab and just work our way around. Again you want to put your glue to the fold. Bring this flap over. Now my card socks are a little bit curly. I'm using a new silhouette mat so it was kind of sticky so my paper is kind of curly but it still makes the box nice. So we have that part. Let's do the top. Oh, make sure we get the little score marks there. All right, so we're going to put glue on this piece. Then this one, you're just going to bring it over and line it up with this part. Just bring it over like that. Oh, there is a score mark there. I knew there was a score mark I was missing. Okay. So bring this piece over. And just lining it up on the side. Just like that. I'm going to take my fingers and kind of press on it. I know the same thing. Grab that little flap, put glue on it. Bring it over, I'm just lining it up on that straight piece. Again, just pressing that down. Now this one, you want to put glue on these flaps here. Again, close to the edge and just line up this flat part of the box with the score mark there. Just bring it over and match up the score mark. You do the same for this side. It goes together super easy. All right, so there's the bottom. Now we have our top. Again, let's go ahead and grab those score marks. We're going to put the paper on first. On the other box I made, I put the box together and then I put the paper on. It's much more difficult that way. Just make sure everything is nicely scored. Okay. All right. So my paper is even curly here. And this is just really cheap paper from Walmart. I had hubby go, I had it for a while, so I asked him to pick me up some paper, some scrapbook paper, while I was at Walmart, and he just got this one. It is really, really a flimsy paper, but I think it's fine for these kind of projects. All right, let's put this on the front. Okay, now we have our side pieces that have the cutout notch as well. So hopefully you guys all had a good holiday weekend. I mentioned in my kitchen remodel, hubby went back to work yesterday. We still have a few things to do in the kitchen. We have the ceiling fan done. 
and we got a new microwave. I still need to get new rugs and the barn doors for the laundry area, they're both hung. But it's been raining here since late Sunday. So he hasn't had a chance to take them outside to stain them. So when he does that, they'll be done. I forgot that scroll mark. Make sure you get all the scroll marks. Right, this one's going to go here. Now, if you are using a directional paper, you do you do want to focus on that because you can see here my lines on this one are going this way and they're going that way on that one. All right, now we have this piece. That's going to go here. And right, then you'll see you have two wider squares and two regular squares. The wider squares are going to go on the bottom. You see it's a wider square here, I think. Let me just look. Actually, I think they can go either way. Let me get the square. The squares are going to go at the bottom. The wider parts go up top. This is a really cute little box, so it's a great for Father's Day. You can put you know, a few trinkets in there, I think. It's a good size. A candy bar would look nice in there. Individual candy, like if Dad has a certain candy that he likes, you can fill it with that. And our last one. Now the same idea, it's going to go together the same exact way. Put glue on the flaps and then just work your way around. Definitely easier to do the paper first. And let's grab these ones. Oh, let me forget. I forgot that one over there. There we go. So for the if you're using a Cricut or a Brother Scan, I have a link below for Lori Whitlock. It's it was one on nine, I believe, which I think is a good price for this. So when you ever whenever you buy an SVG to use with with any of your die cut machines, you own the SVG, you know. So it's not like you have to keep on rebuying it. Okay, two more to go. Then on Friday for our Pinterest inspired project, we'll be in the kitchen making a dessert. I'm really looking forward to that. All right, let's get, get glue on those little flaps there and then we're done. And again, you want to take the straight edge part of here and lining it up with that score mark. That way it forms that indent of the tie. How cute is that, right? All right, let's go ahead and plop it on our box. There we go, we have a gray one and the green one. I think they both look like they're pattern ties, but any questions, guys, let me know. As always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.